um, maybe just for Judith's benefit, um, but so that we don't take up too much time, uh, perhaps you could introduce yourself in the chat box, your name, where you work, and what's your professional role. That would be great if you'd be willing to do that. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and we're really excited that you were able to join us today. Um, we have a special guest, Judith Santmeyer from Okra, and she's going to be shared or joined by one of her staff members. And she's going to provide us some updates on Teach and Power Ohio. So Judith, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you with one encouragement that if you are able to come on video, it's really nice to be able to see your face, no pressure to, but we're also relaxed. If you're eating lunch, no big deal. Um, so welcome, Judith. I'm gonna go ahead and let you go forward. Great, thank you, Kim. Uh, again, my name is Judith Santmeyer. I work with the Ohio Child Care Resource and Referral Association. And today we're going to be talking with you about two programs, the Teach Early Childhood Ohio, as well as Power Ohio Wage Supplements. So uh, for our time together today, uh, there's just a few pieces around uh, gaining an understanding about those eligibility and the scholarship options that are offered through Teach Early Childhood Ohio, and then uh, as well as Power Ohio. So this is meant to be pretty much a high level, but definitely will uh, take any questions that you have. Uh, as we go through the process. Our big piece is that there is new program eligibility related to Power Ohio that was just launched. Uh, and so it, it is so new that I will say we are, we are completing the website revisions to explain all of this today. So <laughs> it is quite caught off the presses. Uh, so you're, you are all the first to hear about this. So wanted to start out a little bit with TEACH, and I, uh, I'm going to pause there for a moment to see if my associate has been able to join us. Shamel, are you on the call? Let's check that real quick. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start this piece, um, but when Shamel is able to join us, uh, she is our senior scholarship counselor, and she works both with Teach Early Childhood as well as Power Ohio. Uh, so she is the works day to day with all of the uh, scholars and questions. She primarily works with those scholars out of the uh, southwest portion of the state, um, but all of these apply statewide. So we'll, we'll be able to get more detail there. A little bit about teach history. So a workforce study was conducted by the Child Care Services Association uh, in conjunction with the Child Care Resources and Frank Porter Graham Child Development Center uh, to look at um, low wages, the turnover rates, all of those pieces that we've struggled with in early childhood. And out of that work that occurred in North Carolina, um, this program was developed. Uh, it is TEACH is an acronym for Teacher Education and Compensation Helps. And uh, currently there are 24 states that are licensed to be TEACH states and Ohio is one of those. Uh, and there can only be one license holder in a state and OCRA currently uh, administers that license. So I will say if, if you have any questions, feel free. Um, to put them in the chat uh, and we can kind of address those as we go. And Judith, I'll follow the chat and let you know if there's questions so you don't have to try to follow both. I appreciate that, Kim. So, when this program was created, they were looking at those opportunities to access debt-free college education, better compensation, and job stability. When we look at how TEACH is structured, it is a three-way partnership that includes uh, the TEACH program, the scholar, as well as the what we call the sponsor or the employer. And so the concept is that 
there are uh, contract agreements that occur that says what each person will do and receive as a part of this process uh, to create that partnership. In February 2003, uh, the statewide project came to Ohio. It started in Cuyahoga County uh, and went statewide at that point. And then, as I mentioned, Okra serves as that administrative home. So when you say, what, what is TEACH? There, there are five main components to that. Uh, one is a comprehensive scholarship. So we're looking at that partnership to pay for tuition, books, paid release time, all of those pieces that become quite expensive as they're entering uh, the higher education realm. We also look at that what that education includes. So right now, our um, models include the possibility of a CDA credential, an associate degree, or a bachelor degree. The bachelor degree, though, I will say, and we'll get a little bit heavier into that, it requires that you possess an associate degree first before moving on to that bachelor degree. Compensation, uh, this is either a raise or a bonus, and the employer for their portion of this can determine which they would rather do, a bonus or a raise. Um, they also receive compensation in the form of a bonus from TEACH as well. Commitment. So this is where we look at this as a retention strategy as well. So their continued employment and turnover reduction as while they're in school. So when they're completing uh, a college credit model, they're required to provide a year uh, of commitment when a contract is completed. And so for each contract year is a year of commitment. So let's say they complete contract number one while they're working in contract number two, they're completing the commitment period for the first contract. So it, it kind of continues to, to move forward in that way. And then of course our counselors, and we have a counseling team here that assists them, uh, walking them through the scholarship process, navigating them through the processes, not only ours, but as well as uh, those at the school level, making sure that they're getting their schedules in and how are they doing and monitoring the progress. So many of our uh, scholars, of course, they, it, we require that they be working. And so these working adults that are trying to get this education as well as you know family commitments as well, um, all of this, it, it can be a little overwhelming at times. And so our counseling team can help them through that process help them get a plan together, access any of the college resources that are available to them to make sure that we can be as successful as possible in this process. Um, Judith, yes. just want to let you know that Shamel has joined. Wonderful, which is a fantastic entry point because we were just talking about counselors. <laughs> yes, Hi, Shamel. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I introduced you already as our senior counselor, and we just talked about the five components, okay. um, but I will let you take the, the details from here. Okay. <laughs> um, so we do offer a CDA training um, through the college, which we work with UC and Cincinnati State. UC is all online and Cincinnati State is half online and half in person. And then we work with the RNRs as well. We do have a CDA credential assessment fee, which helps pay for the test and observation. Um, so the test that they would have to take is 425, um, which we pay 375 of that and the scholar would just pay 50. We have a scholarship for um, the associate's degree and we work with 24 participating schools and then the bachelor's degree. Um, which we do have funding for now. And it is some stipulations for that as well. So, um, so with the eligibility, you have to work at a ODGFS licensed center or be a type A or B family child care provider. Um, there is a wage cap. Assistants can't make more than $14. Lead teachers can't make more than 16 and administrators can't make more than 18. 
um, you have to work at least 30 hours a week with children um, because we do provide release time, um, paid release time, which is a time for you to come outside the classroom and work on anything pertaining your classes. So they still get paid their normal rate of pay. Um, you have to be at your center for a year before you can apply for the associates. And there is that commitment piece as well, um, where you finish a contract and you're in the commitment for that contract and then your new contract starts. Um, Shamel or Judith, either one. Sure. Uh, we do have a question. Um, is the wage cap set by Ohio or does TEACH recommend that or what is the reasoning behind the wage cap? Sure. So uh, each TEACH state does set that wage cap because it looks a little different from state to state. And so uh, we consult not only Teach National, but we have an advisory committee as well that reviews that uh, periodically. Judith, where does Ohio fall in line with um, other states in regards to that? Because I've had a lot of um, staff that haven't been able to qualify for assistant teacher positions because I you know, pay them a living wage of more than $14 an hour. Um, and so where does Ohio fall in line with that? And how, um, how can we advocate to push that higher if, um, if possible by any way? Sure. So uh, currently that is a, a mechanism uh, to drive these funds to our most, lack of a better term, those that have the greatest need. Uh, and so currently our TEACH participants, our average hourly wage is $10.41. Uh, and that includes uh, all teachers, so leads and assistants. Um, so that's currently where we stand. I um, definitely, we take a look at that and I can take it back to the advisory committee again to see if there's, there's any changes as well as consulting our funder, which JFS is our funder in this case. Um, but as we're not seeing in the current participants, uh, some of that movement that we would hope to see, I, I'm not sure that it will change quickly. Um, just as we're considering this, and I know that funding is always a problem, but also getting get more funding to our state, um, that I, I think what that makes me think of is, you know, I'm all about helping those most in need, but also I think from the people's perspective who have great employees, you mm -hmm. wanna keep the rest of the bunch. And so how do we also put funding into retaining those who you know, have been here a while or for, that, or for whatever reason are earning that higher wage? that that's just sure. as critical to make sure we retain those. Yes. And what I will say is, you know, that from time to time, we also, depending on how the feds in our state reviews minimum wage, that too would play a factor if there were changes uh, to that. Did you, do you have a, a certain number of slots that you have to fill or, you know, is it, for that or is it just based on that information and anybody that meets that eligibility gets the scholarship? Uh, currently we uh, do have uh, a goal that we try to reach as far as how many scholarships that we are able to supply. Um, and so we currently do not have a wait list, you know, so we do have availability of those slots. That's kind of why we're talking here to see if there's anyone that uh, might be interested, um, but we don't have a, an unlimited pot either to work from uh, to deliver these scholarships, unfortunately. Well, I got to think you got to change the cap in order to help more people. So that's just my opinion. <laughs> you know, if I can add something to that, because while we might be serving those with the greatest need, there still is a great need among the vast majority of teachers that are out there. And as to equal importance is the great need of our children to have adequate 
care and quality education. And if our teachers aren't getting the degrees and the education that they need, they're not getting the adequate care that they get. So by pension towing and saying that only a certain set of teachers can get it based upon this income level, we're then also saying that those children don't deserve to have adequately trained teachers and care provided to them as well. So it's twofold. And I would highly recommend um, whatever OCRA could do to kind of take those things away and look at the person and not what they're making because it's so um, unbalanced throughout the state of Ohio, depending where you live, whether you're step up, whether you're family child care versus center based child care. I think that should come off the table. We should look at the qualifications, have good recommendations from your admins, work in a facility for a while, show that you have interest in education, and then let's back them up. I think what they get paid should not be a qualifying factor for this. That's my opinion. Thanks, Mandy. So Judith, when you get ready to look for some new teach advisory committee members, we certainly can help you out there. Sure. Um, <laughs> so, okay, we'll let you get back to your presentation. This is good hey, conversation. Thank you guys. Really quick, this is this is Lori from Starting Point. Sure. I, I received, I got all of, because I try to do the ta, the chat and I keep messing it up. But I um I got all my degrees without using teach. Like teach is just for those who can't afford it or er are in that area because there are other ways to get your degree besides just teach. So you know we all come from different parts of Ohio. You know, some people they're doing exactly what they can. I also have a lot of programs that are paying more now because they can't compete with Taco Bell. They can't compete with Arby's, but I totally applaud Teach because it is there for who needs it. Like I got all of my stuff, you know, without, you know, I have student loans, I have all of that, but it's also some of those people and some of the staff that I work with, it is wonderful for them because they don't know how to get those degrees. But I have, I have sat down, I've showed some of the people I work with how to get um, student loans, how to get, you know, different things like that. But, um, you know, I do, I do love teach, but I never knew about that cap because I actually do have a couple of people on there that I think they might make a more money than that now. So I don't know what those stipulations are, but I think teach has been great for those that don't understand or are scared of college. And just to clarify on, on Lori's point, eligibility is determined at the start. It is not a continued Good. piece. So once that they they start with their eligibility, it's not reassessed every time. It's just at the one entry point. That's excellent. Yes. That helps. Mm -hmm. Are we okay to continue? Okay, Shamel. Yeah. So the bachelor degrees is on a limited basis, which we just got um, funding back for bachelors. Um, you must have a, a AA degree in early childhood before you could go on um, to do the bachelor's program here. Um, you can always um, ask for additional information about the bachelor scholarship. Yes, so on a statewide level, because you, if you've heard us talk about TEACH before, it was very uh, localized as far as the availability. Uh, and we do have um, a small number open for the statewide approach as well. So just want to make sure folks are aware of that. Um, so as we move to the college degree, um, like we said before, it is a, a partnership between TEACH, the scholar, and the sponsoring center. TEACH pays 80% of the tuition and fees. The scholar pays 10% and the sponsor pays 10%. Um, usually how the scholar pays their 10% is through their books. So if they buy books, we reimburse them up to 80% of that. Um, their bonus also helps pay their 10%. And we give them a $60 travel stipend, um, which is automatically applied when we do tuition. So that's those reimbursements usually help pay the scholars 10%. Now how the sponsor will pay their 10% is through the paid release time. Um, so they're giving the scholar paid release time to come outside the classroom and work on anything pertaining um, their classes. They still get paid their normal rate of pay. We'll reimburse the center $9 an hour. 
So usually a month's worth of release time will cover um, the sponsor's 10% of tuition. Um, like I said before, the textbooks, the scholar would buy the textbooks, they would provide the receipts and a form B um, and their books help cover their 10% of tuition. The $60 travel they get every semester and it's automatically applied and it also helps with the 10% of tuition. Um, so this is the paid release time, um, which we talked a little bit about, and it's just for um, the scholars to get away from the classroom to work on homework, um, assignments, and stuff like that. Um, we do, it's $9 an hour. Um, they get, it depends on how many credit hours they um, get. So if they take in one class, which is three credit hours, they'll get three hours a week. If they're taking two classes, which is usually six credit hours, they'll get six hours a week. We don't exceed the six um, hours a week. So usually I suggest give them a paid lunch break. Maybe if they could leave a little bit early, um, come in late, they could bank their hours and maybe take a day off to study before finals. So it's really up to the director and the scholar how they get this time um, away from the classroom. For the compensation piece, they have to complete nine credit hours a year. Um, so I have some scholars who take one class a semester. Um, so the year would be three semesters, so spring, summer, fall. They at least need to complete nine credit hours. Um, and then they'll receive a $300 bonus from us. And then the center has to choose to give them a bonus or raise. Um, so that's where that compensation piece comes in at. So they will receive something each year from us and from their center. So this is just a list of schools that um, we work with, the associates and the bachelors. And you can find that on our website as well. So now we're going to talk about the CDA assessment fee um, scholarship, which is available for type A, type B, um, and anyone that work in an ODJFS licensed child care program. The wage cap is the same as for the associates and bachelors, 14, 16, and 18. Um, for the CDA assessment fee, you have to at least to work 20 hours a week with children, birth through five, because you can only get an infinite toddler, a preschool, or a family child care CDA. Um, the commitment for this is six months. So you have to be at your center six months before you can apply. And then once you receive your CDA, it's a commitment of six months to stay with your center. So the retention piece for that. Um, so when you apply for the CDA, you have to have your high school diploma. You wanna make sure you have worked 480 hours, which is usually six months um, in the past year. Um, completed 120 hours of training. You have to have 10 hours in each subject area within the last five years. Your questionnaires and your portfolios put together. Um, that's when you know you're ready to apply for the CDA test and observation so that you can receive your CDA. Um, so the components of TEACH, um, there is an application fee of $50, which the scholar will play, pay, um, then we pay $375. So we put the $375 and $50 together, and you get a voucher for $425. Um, once the scholar has received their CDA, they get a $100 bonus from us, and the center has to choose to give them a $100 bonus or a 1% raise. And this is just some things that our administrators are saying about TEACH. Um, it has increased their step up to quality ratings. It gives them a peace of mind with TEACH scholars with the commitment period, um, retained staff providing children, um, makes a great hiring incentive, saves money on tuition and reimbursement programs, offering an easy to use scholarships, and presents a way for administrators to earn degree and set good examples for staff at the same time. Great, thank you, Shamel. Mm -hmm. so that is our, our last slide on TEACH. Are there any other questions on that before we move on to power?
Okay, so Power Ohio is our state's wage supplement program. Uh, it too is an acronym, uh, stands for Powering Optimal Wages and Encouraging Retention. Um, this one is a little different in wage supplements. Uh, they're paid directly to the professional uh, when the educational milestones are achieved and when they maintain employment at their program. There's both program and professional eligibility and it can be used with TEACH scholarships. So any of the models that Shamel described as far as the associates and the CDA, those models, um, TEACH can be used on those and then they can also apply for power and receive those milestone payments and retention. The application for power is in the Ohio Professional Registry. So when they log into their profile, they would be able to see that in the, on their applications page. Eligibility is the same as TEACH. Uh, we are having a wage cap for them as well. And then looking at the work at least 20 hours uh, weekly with uh, children ages birth to five. And then here's the new piece around the program. So before we were targeted very much uh, in step up as far as helping those achieve ratings and maintain ratings. And so when we met the 2020 goal back in September of 2020, um, then it was that we needed to have 50% or more publicly funded children um, in the programs to be able to participate. And so the new program eligibility is that it's uh, professionals working in all ODJFS licensed programs. So removing that piece around rating and um, publicly funded childcare uh, to be able to um, broaden that eligibility a bit. Uh, like I had mentioned, there are two pathways. So one is the CDA. So the payment points are at achieving 120 training hours, uh, this obtaining the CDA credential itself, and then um, six and 12 months from the date on their certificate when they receive the credential, um, they provide us with a letter of, from the employer that says, yes, I am still um, employed working with children birth to five in an eligible role uh, so that they're able to receive those six and 12 month retention payments. Um, that, that letter becomes crucial and I appreciate those that, that participate to provide those letters because we do wanna make sure that that uh, is accurate at the point that they receive that because it's quite possible that they get approved um, before they complete their 120 hours. So there's a little bit of time before they actually attain the credential and then reach those uh, time milestones. The associate degree uh, on our website, it shares what the acceptable degrees are because not only is it early childhood, but it also provides some related degrees as well. Um, so there are 12 that are listed there, um, which helps um, because those folks are also you know, working in our programs. And the payment points are at each six credit hours. So six, 12, 18, continuing all the way up to 60 credit hours. Uh, that they receive a payment. And then once they graduate, um, they have a six and 12 month retention. One piece with this uh, associate degree is that they need to provide us transcripts from the school that they're attending uh, to prove that they've successfully completed those credit hours. And they upload that into their registry as well. So all of the, the documentation that they're providing us for power occurs through their profile. So definitely we'll open it up for questions, but wanted to also provide you with our contact information as well. Um, so that if, you know, once we leave here and you have additional questions, you can definitely reach out to us. Are there any questions we can chat about now? Judith, I had a question regarding eligibility for, um, do you still have a cap on how many teachers can be on teach at the same time in a center? 
So uh, a lot of that is around, we used to have a cap that it was two, that you yes. could only have two. Right. Um, right now, our current practice is that when you reach two, we have a conversation to just say for the ones, the additional scholars, just huh. making sure that there's the, uh, the, the center is able to take on those additional responsibilities for more okay. than two, but there okay. is not currently a cap of a number. Perfect, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? All right. Well, I definitely no, I have a com oh. I just have a comment. Oh. I have Perfect. so many programs that love the um the power program. It has really helped a lot. It's helped them, you know, continue going to school. It's and I always tell everybody, I didn't get any of these perks. I just get a bill. I still get a bill. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I tell them that you know, there's so many things out there. That even though we don't make a lot of money in this field, and and a lot of people don't, a lot of us, a lot of people just still think we're babysitters, which breaks my heart all the time. But there's so much out there now that we can do for everybody. And I just really, really appreciate it. Thank and I'm you. speaking for my huge caseload that says that they appreciate it as well. Thank you. Judith, there's a question from Sharon Ward. How much money do they get through power? So uh, it varies on the pathway. So it is uh, up to 12,800 for the associate degree, um, if, if they come to us and they just started. So if they are already in school, we pay go, you know, moving forward. So it would potentially be up to that amount. Uh, and it's a little over 1,200 uh, for the CDA. Now, the, um, I would encourage folks, if you haven't, uh, We'll be posting the hot card on our website later today. Um, take a look at that because the role plays uh, a part in the payments as far as if you're a teacher versus an administrator. Um, so that looks a little different. Is there a chart that shows the payment structure on the website? Uh, there will be by the end of today. Uh, as I mentioned a little earlier, this is a very hot off the presses <laughs> type announcement that we're chatting with you all about today. Uh, so the website will be completed today. So if you go tomorrow, it will all look pretty and all set up for you to pull that chart down wow. so you can see that. One more question, Judith. Um, Michael's asking, is power a national program or just state funded? Uh, power is not a national program. Um, many states do have a wage supplement program. Um, Teach has a sister program called Wages um, that I think there's probably four or five states now that have implemented that. Um, our wage supplement program uh, came out of our need to really reach the 2020 goal. So it was very specific and targeted once it was created. Um, so now we're looking at, you know, like this eligibility change with programs, um, how that gets moved forward. So when is the revisioning of this program? When does that take place? Uh, the revision for power around the program eligibility is effective now. Or teach. So like, does somebody look at this? You know how our rule review happens every five years? Does somebody look at the outcomes of the program and the statistical information to ask in daycare owners? What are they running into as issues with the program? Does anybody look at that or it's just the program? And it is what it is. No, we have uh, reviews as far as uh, reporting and documentation. It goes to JFS as well as our uh, national, the national license holder, the Teach National Center. Is there something? 
Is there something specific as far as feedback, though, that you're concerned about where that is provided? No, I'm just listening to the previous comments. It seems like an undertone. Of there are some areas that are being missed. Prime example would be that 1041. A lot of people probably don't qualify because they're already paying their staff more than that. But we're seeing some areas that are missed to see if it's, is it a review of this programming or this is just, it is what it is. If you qualify, you qualify. If you don't, you don't. I see. Thank you. I have another question. Um, sure. So the, we weren't eligible for the original power program because I think it was, we had already had a one star rating when it came out. So it was originally set up for centers that didn't have any step up to quality rating. Is that correct? Uh, it was centers who did not have a rating and then 50 those that were rated had 50% or more publicly funded children that they serve. Right. So yes. I, I didn't qualify. So are you saying now that they've taken away all of that requirement about stars and 50% of PFCC children? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and so this, the wage supplement is only for those attending school or for everyone who works at the center? It would only be for those that are working towards a CDA or an associate degree. And what if they've already obtained a CDA or an associate degree? they would not be eligible at this time. Really? Yes. All right. Well, this that's a shame. <laughs> um, so the, somebody who's already got a, a degree is not eligible. This is only for people going to school. That's correct. Okay. So all the centers that already had power, that was for anybody who worked at their center, wasn't it? They needed to be working in an eligible role. Well, what happens to them? Are they not going to get that funding anymore then? As far as those that were already participating? Correct. They, they would continue because the they were at a narrower eligibility. So now that we're opening it up to additional programs, they would still be a part of that. Okay, so mine, because I didn't participate in the first place because I wasn't eligible at that point in time, I can't, the rest of my staff can't participate in this program only the staff going to school. That are, yes, that are in eligible roles. So it, it would be an administrator, owner, a lead teacher, or an assistant teacher. Right, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. No problem. Lisa, I don't know if you see any others that we can talk through. Yeah, one second. Let me scroll through. We have some questions on, long, so sorry. How long do you have to work in a program in order to be eligible? Uh, and looks like uh, was answered 12 months. And then we have a question, how do you apply for teach? Sure, so currently uh, teach applications are available on our website. And then the Power Ohio application is available through their OPR profile. Thanks, Judith. And then uh, Marissa asks from an employer standpoint, what are the costs related in participating in these two programs? If we're interested in offering this to our staff, 
what do we need to do in order for center, partic center participation? Sure. So uh, power does not, uh, we'll do that one that's a little easier. Power does not require uh, any financial commitment um, from the employer. Um, so that's truly just payments from power to the uh, scholar recipient. And then for teach, um, there is uh, the 1% uh, raise or bonus um, that is a part of that component. And then for uh, the associate degree, you have the, the tuition component, which is 10%, uh, as well as uh, the raiser bonus as well. And what I will say, there is a, a great um, flyer that's on our website that provides a example for the associate degree, because that one's slightly more complex uh, about kind of what those costs and uh, example and uh, to ballpark what that would look like. And then just to add to it, so how the how we pay tuition is financial aid is applied first and whatever other grants they get. And then what's ever left teach will cover so that they won't have to take out any loans. Um, so sometimes we pay nothing, sometimes we pay all. So it really just depends on how much we are paying for that scholar that semester of how much 10% 10, 10 would be. Yes, that's a great point, Chanel. I don't see any new questions, uh, folks. Is anybody else happy to, to ask or to add in the chat? I would ask that you reduce the, the year requirement for you to be in teach. So that's it. Okay. So I have the, uh, as far as kind of my takeaways to take a look at definitely the wage gap. And then as just mentioned, uh, the length of time uh, before they're eligible. Okay. Again, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I definitely appreciate kind of sharing kind of where we are with these, uh, as well as the new program eligibility for power. Uh, we're hoping that that will uh, reach a little bit larger audience than what we were able to before. Terrific. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. I think we lost Kim on the call. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure she was able to hop on via um, phone. We, we appreciate you joining. And uh, um, if there are any additional questions that, that come up, um, we'll direct them your way. Great. Thank you. All righty. Take care. You too.